Uh, right recording. So hi you guys and welcome to my channel. I'm back with a new video and you guys requested me to watch a clip from the Lex Friedman podcast. I'll be watching him sometimes, but I'm not seeing this one. This video is called Destiny Explains the Red Pill Dating Community to Lex. So we're going to see what we're talking about. I'm not going to ramble. So let's get straight into the video. Oh, uh, right, you guys. Sit back. Relax. Can I talk to you about relationships? Yeah. yeah, we already have so. Yeah, I know, but more generally speaking, we we didn't get a chance to talk mm -hmm. about the the red pill community. Oh sure. Uh, well, first of all, what is the red pill community, the manosphere in general? I'd love to get both of your opinions on this. Sure. <laughs> I I know I know you're probably not as opinionated on I'd that say, whole. Do you think I am that? Like Depends. probably not as you like as much as you, but I I do have opinions. You, you do okay. I usually don't like He's speak like, out too opinions. much on it because I feel like there's like a language barrier. So I don't. <laughs> I, that's why I don't really do politics because yeah. this is my second language. Yeah. That's right. You, mm -hmm. you have to know the, 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 a little bit like you, that, you know yeah. how to use have to use derogatory terms every other sentence. Yeah. So they understand you, right? Exactly. And as, like, as, I don't know anything about that. But you also you need like a good like you need to be able to like speak really well for people to take you seriously. I think and like that's the thing like if I if I don't have like the words and I don't have the like I can't I was gonna say sometimes that don't even matter like people want to misunderstand you and like you cannot please people on the internet like I learned that early I don't pronounce care. things correctly yeah. and people yeah. are not say, searching for words like stupid so, essentially yeah. that's how people view yeah. it yeah. tell me about it I have a, a podcast <laughs> that a bunch of people listen to and I mumble and they yeah wait is your what's your first language Russian oh okay but I speak both languages horribly. I'm just not, <laughs> I'm not like, there is definitely a big disconnect between my brain and my mouth module. Like I'm not able to generate the thoughts efficiently. Like the things you're able to do, like, da -da 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 -da, like speak like that, I'm not. Mm -hmm. It's very, very tough. Plus there's a huge amount of anxiety and social interaction that I have, which makes speaking even harder. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 it's tough. I understand it. Gotcha. Yeah. I can... <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, the the gotcha is both uh, a symbol of That's... compassion and derision at once. It's, it's, I'm just it's... letting you know I understand what you say. I'm no, just gonna sit there and stare at you. And no, you can Echo. just say like, yeah, I get it. Like, yeah, I yeah, get it. Like, I get it. Yeah. Gotcha. No, no, got got you. I gotcha. Got you. Sounds... I got you. No, it's so it's so short. It's like I got you. say say gotcha. say a longer sentence, but that means the same thing. I understand you. Yeah, good. that's good. That's like <laughs> okay. not chills. Okay. You know, you get chills. So like, yeah. you understand me. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And like, if you just like hold the other person's hand, that's even like, better. You gotta put in some yeah, emotion there. Okay? Show that you have some. I understand. <laughs> right, what do you What do you think about? <laughs> gotcha. What What do you think about red pill? Uh, what What? Uh, sorry. What What is it? First of all, for people who don't know. Yeah, the red pill community, obviously it's the matrix reference. The red pill that you take is when you realize what dating standards and norms really are in the world, that men are providers and have to become some great thing to hunt and attract, you know, the women who are just kind of there floating around looking for people to give them the most resources. And it's like coming to a realization of what the world of dating really is, broken away from the Hollywood standards and the romantic stuff that they try to sell you in, you know, stories. So there was kind of maybe you can kind of educate me on this but red pill used to be associated with just um maybe anti-establishment views i don't know uh, maybe maybe a republican conservative viewpoint people maybe use right kind of, yeah they use red pill a lot in like different communities like when you say the red pill community yeah that usually means dating the dating thing but a lot of people say like, oh trump voters they're red pilled are you red pilled on like politics or whatever people say stuff like that yeah Okay, cool. And then there's like the manosphere that's all the similar type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And Andrew Tate is somebody that represents kind of the figurehead of the manosphere of like the red pill stuff. Yeah, I would say so. I'm pretty sure. Andrew Tate's foot soldiers are coming at me. Like for some reason, like even if you agree a little bit and disagree with something, that don't matter. You have to agree with every single thing. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Crazy. All right, cool. So uh, sides, what are, are some ideas that they represent and what do you think about them? I think they do a good job at speaking to disaffected young men who feel like the rest of the world has kind of left them behind or isn't willing to speak to them. And they do identify some true and real problems. Feels like on the left, we have a really hard time doing like self-improvement or telling people how to better themselves. We focus too much on like structural or systemic issues rather than what can an individual do to uplift or empower themselves. And it also feels like they do a good job at speaking to some of the positive aspects of masculinity, that it's okay to be like strong and brave and a soldier and a warrior and provide for your family and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I would say like those are like positive messages, like self-improvement and everything that come from the red pill community. 
What's the negative? I think the analysis on how men and women interact is a way too transactional. All of like the romanticism and love and chemistry is totally sucked out of it. Everything is very like sex-based, like how do you basically have sex with the most amount of women possible and that's going to make you happy. Um, and then I think people's motivations sometimes are just spoken about in such a shallow derogatory way that I don't think is always reflective of reality. Like woman only wants you because you make six figures and you're tall and a guy only wants you because he wants to have sex with you and blah, blah. Like it feels like there's a lot of that going on a lot. Yeah. And that misses some fundamental aspect about relationships, yeah. about meaningful relationships and so on. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, I've never heard red pill people ever, ever talk about like meaningful relationships. It's always just how to get in one or how to have sex really. Mel, what bothers you about some of that philosophy? I feel like the people that are like the red pill people, I feel like their solution is something that doesn't actually work out. Um, it like or it work out. It works out for some people, people that makes a lot of money is like really successful in that sort of way, yeah. but it's not going to help most men out there so i feel like it's just like a pointless like speech to give to these like really lost guys and they really do believe that they can like they can become successful they can uh get money and like w and when they get all these things they can get girls but m most of them is not gonna achieve that ever to get so, the money part or become successful just become a billionaire you know <laughs> like and you will get all the girls and which is true but not everyone can do that so I feel like when these guys are speaking to these men... I mean, you're getting a certain type of man or woman if you come to that rank and, like, and then people, are, like, women will, like, want you. It's going to be a certain type, not everyone. And they're just like, we just care about these men out there. You know, they need to hear this. It doesn't really help a lot of them. And it doesn't um, inspire them to develop compassion towards the opposite sex, which is probably something required to have a that meaningful well. relationship. And also like they, they seem to complain a lot about women, um, like only wanting men that have money and that's tall and that's muscular, whatever, you know, all those things. Um, and But they, they complain about that, but that's like also kind of what they're trying to make the men try to do for themselves. Mm -hmm. So they kind of like fall into the same sort of behavior. And it seems like they're kind of unaware of that as well. Um, they're just playing a part of the game instead of trying to find a woman that doesn't look for those things and that are looking for not those things. Yeah. I actually would love to have like straight up data on people in that world versus not in that world, how often they get laid. Yeah. <laughs> like literally. So I think for sure people in that world have fewer meaningful long-term relationships that are fulfilling that actually help them succeed in life that help them be happy and content and all that kind of stuff but just even the straight up the the shallow goal of getting laid i wonder uh -huh. because it, it's very possible that like just the the roughness with which they uh treat intellectually women that might lead to lower success not higher success it's very adversarial, which I think yeah. is always disappointing. Anything that talks about men and women, I think it's good to acknowledge differences, but when it becomes like adversarial, especially when you talk about sex, sex is something that men are getting and it's something that women are giving. And that type of like trade-off and the way they talk about it is like, yeah, it sets people against each other in a really toxic way, I think. Mm -hmm. How do you talk to people from that world? from the red pill world. Like, would you would you ever talk to like somebody like Andrew Tate? Oh yeah, if I had the chance to. I've been on the um, Fresh and Fit podcast a few times and then I've got a friend, Sneeko, who's like very red pill, that stuff. Um, if I'm trying to talk to them, usually the, um, it's kind of like approaching a, like a scared cat. The first thing you have to do is like be very gentle and say like, I understand your issues. I understand your complaints. I know that you're, I'm scary <laughs> because you think I'm gonna say like toxic masculine. I've like been very like, because I, I can, you know, find good and bad things uh, with the arguments. And when I just talk, they just attack me personal and just just getting away from the subject and just attacking me personal that have nothing to do with what we're talking about. Just being so, like, uh, defensive with everything and feeling attacked. When I'm not even attacking, I'm just, like, you know, sharing my opinion and saying what I think is right and what is wrong. And you have to, like, agree with every single thing 100%. If it's something you have to say... They like coming for you like crazy. and feminism and all these scary words at you. Yeah, uh, so the first thing is always to recognize that. it. Like a lot of what they talk about, there are that. like true aspects to what they're talking about that people on the left won't recognize. So I think it's good to 
acknowledge those things that like men and women are kind of different we do look yeah. for different things in general when it comes to relationships it's okay to say that it's not there's nothing bad there yeah. and then it'll usually be like once i've got your trust and i'm in your bubble like let's talk about the things that you want and maybe the, like, some of the strategies that you're employing aren't necessarily going to get you some of the things that you want so for instance if you're really worried about like shallow girls like ruining your life like melina said um it's probably not best to build your entire worldview around trying to get shallow girls that are going to ruin your life like if your way of attracting a girl is to go to the gym get a whole bunch of money and and try to like flaunt your wealth as much as possible. Exactly. You're... Then you're gonna get a certain type of woman that I don't want you. They just want what you have. You're gonna be attracting the very same type of women that you're here like decrying on your stream. Yeah, I think we talked about that on the podcast. Like, you probably want to have a woman that's gonna be there if you lose your job. Mm -hmm. It's still there. Like, mm -hmm. that cares about the things that's not just your job. Yeah. And it's more stable. And also, I don't help you become a great man or a great, like, grow. Like, I feel like a great friendship and a partnership. Like it helps yeah. you make you a better person. Some of the most successful people I know, I mean, they have families and there's clearly a dynamic there that's like, that makes them, they wouldn't be that without. They're not an island, yeah. Yeah, and the, the kids actually are a big part of that too. Like for most people, if you're like a good parent, they make you step up somehow in life. You have to take responsibility for getting your shit together and mm -hmm. excelling in ways that, uh, I guess the philosophy of the Red Pill does not quite get to. That's always an interesting. I think I've asked that a couple of times where it's like, would you let your daughter date Andrew Tate? And it's always funny to watch them kind of like squirm around those answers sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But see, if they if they don't have a daughter, like, I, you know, I don't have a daughter. I think your whole philosophy changes once you have a daughter. Sure. Like you well, can but even at that, like... I want to say, like, Andrew Tate, like, he, like he's making money from this. I do believe that he's standing by what he's saying, but... I mean, it's a character, it's an image. Like, he's going into a role when he creates content and stuff like that. I don't think that he is like that in real life. Like, what, what he, like, how he talks and how he is in front of the camera. But I do believe that he, what he says, that he stands for it and, you know, believes in it. But it's an image. They can, they know that what they're answering, they feel a little bit weird about it. It's funny to watch him. Like, they even, they know, it's like, ah, fuck, mm. you know. Well, they, they might say, like, I, I want my daughter to date, like, a high-value male. To the degree that he's a high value male, yes. But like, I don't think you'll feel that way. The definition of high value changes completely. For sure, yeah. Certainly the stereotypical measures of value contribute to the calculation, but it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the chemistry of the whole thing is, is bigger. Yeah, like this discussion can be long, but you will have a very poor, and in my opinion, not a good relationship if you only when I find someone that her have made it, have all this money, like to me, a healthy relationship, you find someone, even if you guys don't, are unemployed, you're broke, like you can build up together, but like to find someone first, you shouldn't be looking at what kind of job they have and stuff like that. You should get to know the person. Uh, yeah, that's just my opinion, but we all are different. People are looking for different things in life, but to me to truly have like a healthy and to feel happy, uh, is if you guys meet both ways like it becomes a it needs to be a balance because if you're meeting a man that have you know they're talking about six figures and all this and that and you're here he will always have the upper hand and decide in the relationship because it's a certain respect like he worked for that and now you coming in and want to take part of it like the best for me is like if you meet at a balanced uh, level where you're at in life same when it comes to age and stuff like that, generational gaps, like, I feel like it's best when you meet someone around the same age as you too, because, like, 10 years apart is such a totally different uh, generation, what you're going through, what you have in common and stuff like that. It's always going to be that distance. Uh, but, yeah. Share your opinion. What do you guys think? But I will stop around with you guys. I uh, appreciate you watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And hopefully I'll see you in another video. Bye. <laughs>